What's going on guys, Dots Gaming here, and today I'm bringing you a video discussing my OBS Studio settings for recording local gameplay footage on direct to my PC in 2022. I've been asked about this a lot from a lot of my stream viewers and just a lot of people on YouTube about what settings do I use, how do I configure OBS Studio, so I figured I would just make a video quickly showcasing my settings and how I have things set up and just explain uh, really quickly what I use. So in terms of these first two tabs, general and stream, we don't care about these because we're not streaming. We're you're doing local recordings this tab right here output this is where the money happens so you're going to want to change output mode from i think it's like simple at a base to change that to advanced because that allows you to like deep dive in your settings and change things a bit more so you're going to want to go to the recording tab and you're going to want to set the first thing you do is set your recording path this is going to be where all of your raw recording files go when you are done recording them you could also set whatever recording format you want this will depend on what your video editing software can handle i personally really like mp4s so i personally just use that file type but you can use whatever you want different file types will be better for multiple audio tracks i don't use that when i most of the time when i'm recording so i just do one so mp4 serves my needs perfectly the big thing when you talk about recording and streaming in general honestly is the encoder and this is mostly going to be centered around people with nvidia graphics cards i highly recommend the new nvidia nbank encoder it is extremely good and efficient for recording and streaming gameplay the old version of InBank was pretty bad, but they did make some changes and some updates to it a while ago, and now I highly recommend using this one for OBS Studio. Now, a lot of other guides that you see on how to set up your OBS settings, a lot of times will recommend that you use something like the X264 encoder. The reason that, at least for me, I play a lot of MMOs, the reason I don't generally recommend that encoder is because for most MMO games, a lot of the performance bottlenecks are in the CPU. And so I don't want to put extra load on my cpu by trying to stream through it as well because i do single box stream so i would much rather put the load on my gpu which isn't even being close to fully utilized in most of the games that i play plus the nvenc encoder just utilizes the gpu so efficiently to stream and record that i have been able to stream and record in much higher resolution and with much higher bit rates and whatnot compared to when i was doing x264 so if you do have nvidia i highly recommend using this encoder you are not going to want to do any output rescaling here. It's better to do it in another location, which I will show you in a little bit. Now, in terms of rate control for recording, I highly recommend CQP. This basically uses an algorithm to make sure that your frames have a more consistently good appearance across your entire recording and will vary the bit rate and whatnot based off of what that algorithm feels that it needs to produce a quality looking image now in terms of your cq level that is going to be what determines the quality of your recording higher quality though is going to obviously mean more strain on the computer as well as a bigger file size now what i recommend personally is anywhere from 15 to 20 15 will give you a higher quality picture video whatever 20 will be so good but obviously not as good as 15 but you know that's generally the range that i recommend so you set that to whatever you want based off of the performance of your pc now in terms of keyframe intervals i just set that to two it's like two is just like the universally accepted value for keyframe intervals for content creation so i just leave it at two um for preset and profile i set that to max quality and high this will give me the greatest appearance and greatest looking picture um in terms of the recording so you just you know you look at these other options they're not as good so max quality and high will give you the highest quality video that you can get i also turn on look ahead and psycho visual tuning for those reasons they're just extra parameters that you could turn on to increase the um like i said increase the quality of your video so if you want to you can look at these little question marks here and see what they specifically do um you know but i recommend turning these on because it makes your recording look way better i set the gpu to zero because i only have one gpu so this would be like which gpu do you want to use to do the encoding i only have one so i left this at default now for max b frames i set this to four because nvidia recommended on their website that if you do um use the look ahead option that you set your b frames to four so because i use this to increase the quality of my you know um increase the quality of my recording i set the b frames to four since that is what the company who makes the encoder recommends um i don't do anything here with the audio tab uh replay buffer can be used if you want to use it this is kind of like the same type of thing that shadow play has where you can like save like you know if you turn on the replay buffer you can like 
save like the last 10 minutes of whatever you were doing, right? So this is good if you, let's say you're streaming a game and you just look at, or you're recording a game and you just want clips, you don't want to record a six hour long video and then snip it down. You just want to record the individual clips, setting, enabling the replay buffer can be really good for that. Um, I try to basically make the maximum memory as high as I can. I don't care how big the file tip is with replay buffer. And then you set the replay time to however long you want it to be in seconds. If you do choose to enable this though, you are going to want to go down to hotkeys and make a key bind for save replay. Okay, that's going to be important. Um, I have a stream deck, so I will bind that to my stream deck so that if I do want to use this, I can just push the button and boom, it will save my recording to my, to my recordings folder. Um, the next thing is audio audio your i don't really change too much here the biggest thing that you want to change though is make sure that your sample rate for your microphone your headset and obs are all lined up are all the same so i make mine 48 kilohertz so that is what i personally use channels for stereo for desktop audio and uh, the mic, this is obviously going to depend on what you're using. So me personally, the way that I have my audio set up, I have two different audio channels that go into my um, or two different audio I guess, options that go into my recording. One that includes Discord voice and one that doesn't include Discord voice. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to know how to do that. You do not need the like the voice meter banana thing or whatever. I had nothing but problems with that. I found the world's greatest article online that explains how to set this up without using it. So I will leave that in the description below, but that is what I did with setting up my audio. And I didn't really change anything else here in the audio settings. I just honestly, I found them at default. They were more than okay. Now here in the video tab, this is gonna be where we do our downscaling here. So my base uh, screen on my main monitor that I'm doing the recording on is 1440p. So I do wanna downscale that because I'm not streaming in 1440p. So for this recording in particular, I personally use 1920 by 1080p. You can set this to be 720p if you want to, 936, whatever you want it to be. But this right here is where you're going to want to do the downscaling downscaling for your resolution you want to make sure it does have the same aspect ratio the downscale filter that i do recommend using is the lang sauce filter it is the best filter for video quality so i do recommend using that and then you can set your fps to be whatever you want i personally do record and stream in 60 fps um and then i don't really do anything here on the advanced tab now, really quickly though, I do just want to discuss um, some audio settings because I have also been asked a lot about, you know, my mic and how I have the mic set up and everything. So I will really quickly go over that. So if you go over here to like the cog wheel um, next to your audio stuff, bar, whatever, audio mixer, that's the word. <laughs> and you click, uh, you click filters. This is where a lot of the work is gonna be done here. So I personally use four filters in this order and this is how I found it to be the best. Noise suppression, noise gate, compressor, and limiter so the noise suppression is just going to suppress some background noise if you have you know like i have a dehumidifier on behind the curtain over there and so you know basically i would do a recording listen to it you know and then raise the, you know move this from right down to the left to suppress more noise based off of how you know trying to cut out the dehumidifier so i personally recommend using the speaks method i don't know at least for me like with the good quality RNN noise, my mic ends up sounding like crap whenever I use that one for some reason. So I personally just use this. And like I said, you set the suppression level to be whatever you want. Noise gate this is another one that's going to be pretty personal to you settings wise. I don't really touch the attack time, hold time and release time. But basically what this is going to do is allow you to open your mic for sound as I just smack it in my bed. <laughs> you can open your mic for sound when you speak at a certain volume, and then it will close off the audio channels um, once your voice drops below a certain volume. This is basically super helpful for um, like not picking up like mic sounds or cueing in your mic if you're just doing other things and not speaking. So very helpful for that. Again, you want to adjust this so that when you talk, you can see your audio like you see at the bottom, you see it go up when you are speaking and when you're talking and that you don't lose any words, but you wanna make sure that when you're not speaking, that nothing around you, whether it be keyboard clicking, doing whatever you are deciding you wanna remove, is not gonna cue in your mic. So that's what the close threshold is, is when it stops picking up audio, open threshold is when it does pick up audio. 
Now, your compressor is going to help out with basically evening out the audio throughout your speaking, throughout you speaking, you know, basically when you normally talk, you know, sometimes or more, most of the time for me, <laughs> I talk pretty loud. And sometimes you talk pretty quietly just from doing, you know, normal things and the way people talk. And so the compressor helps make the uh, more quieter noises a bit more louder and the more loud noises a bit quieter. Now for that, this is how I personally have mine set up three uh three to one ratio negative 22 threshold six uh six millisecond attack 60 millisecond release with a four db output gain this is personally what i have found to be the best for me you are going to want to mess with these i think a little bit yourself to kind of see if, if my settings don't work for you perfectly um i have a blue yeti mic so what i did was i turned the gain basically nearly all the way down um and then used this to really take care of a lot of my audio now i basically so i have the ratio three to one so it's not really like um overly uh what's the word that i'm looking for it's not it's not messing with my audio too too much a lot of times when i had a higher ratio where the compressor would do more work that's the word i'm looking for my audio i felt sound like a little bit muddled didn't really like it um so i just had it just just mostly to make it so that it helps my low if i do ever speak quietly helps bring that up so people can hear what i'm saying but the most relevant filter for me when i talk is the limiter the limiter is basically very similar to a compressor but it is like a hard stop so like when I speak, my voice will not go above what I set the threshold to be. That's going to hard stop it there. This is really good for if you get hyped a lot, and, you know, will get loud while you stream and record and whatnot. That's going to help it make it so that you don't blow out your viewers eardrums. So I personally set this again with me. I found negative six to be a good value. It was enough that i wasn't making like people's like ears hurt if i got like really hyped and loud but it wasn't so it didn't limit so much that if you set your limiter too high like you limit too much you're gonna notice that your your voice sounds like flat in a way and so i tried to find a volume or a, or a setting for this where it wasn't gonna make my voice sound flat but at the same time it wasn't going i would block out the really loud audio to prevent me from like hurting the ears of my viewers during situations where i got really uh, really excited and whatnot um but yeah those are my settings for for recording and for my mic and everything that is how i have myself set up um for streaming and recording in 2022 hopefully you guys did find this video helpful if you did i'd appreciate if you left a like on it, it really does help me with the youtube algorithm uh, if you have any questions about the settings feel free to leave a comment below also if you try these let me know how they work for you i would appreciate that a lot and if you guys like this video and want to see more gaming content mmorpg content elder scrolls online and maybe some more streaming videos like this where i talk more about content creation here and there feel free to hit that sub button as well as the bell to keep those notifications on thank you all so much for stopping by today i do very much appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming and I'll see you all in the next one.